questions. Do you need a preamp pedal and should it have a DI out? Well, yes, you do, and yes, it should. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Obviously, there's more to say about the Wittenberg bass preamp, so stick around. Welcome back to the Wetterbase. Forget what I asked before. The real question is, why is it called the Wittenberg? And I have no answer for that. Wittenberg is a town in Germany close to Berlin. Okay, back to the topic. What is the basic function of the Wittenberg? Well, it's like a DI box with a preamp made for bass. And when it's off, you can still use it as an active DI box, but without the preamp section. So it sends the direct raw signal of your bass or whatever effect you put in front of it, provided the pedal is connected to a nine volt power supply. Why and where in the signal chain should we use a preamp with a DI? I clearly see two scenarios. One, to send your dry signal to an audio interface or to a sound engineer. And the other, after the effects, just before hitting the amp, to send the wet balanced signal for recording or live situations. That's why for every sound sample in this video, you will hear first the DI out and then the amp with a mic. <laughs> So someone on Instagram asked me if this preamp could saturate and as you've just heard, it does, but more on that later. For now, let's check another interesting feature of this pedal and that is the mid switch that allows you to select either low or high mids to cut or boost. <laughs> So what is this mid switch useful for? Well, mids are typically a territory that everyone in a band fights for. So being able to adjust the mids for a sound that cuts through a mix or for a warmer and more laid back tone is always a welcome and useful feature. And now for example of how to thicken up the sound a little bit and making it more balanced, at least to my ears. <laughs> So we know the Wittenberg can saturate. 
at the end of this video, we're going to fiddle around with the knobs and pay attention to how much the EQ, especially the mids, have an impact on the gain, almost as if the EQ was running into the gain. Unless you have a hot output active bass and want to keep the signal level just below the saturation point, which you can do, by the way, using the passive active switch, you can fool around with the gain and EQ knobs to add a saturated texture to your sound, with similar results you'd have with a tube preamp, for example. But we also need to know how it reacts with a driven sound in front of it. For this, we're going to use the bass soul food from Electro Harmonics, a low gain overdrive. So there's enough headroom even for a hotter signal. And even if there wasn't enough headroom, that wouldn't be a problem as the saturation of the Wittenberg is quite pleasant. The EQ works like a charm and is discreet yet effective. Also, the DI is very clean and I've confidently used it for other videos before this one. Finally, next to the DI balance output and the line unbalance output, there is a small ground lift switch in case you come across ground hum noise. I do have a small critic about this pedal, or at least about this particular unit. The hole on the box for the 9 volt socket is slightly off-centered, so it's a bit difficult to insert the 9 volt plug. I talked to Cody from Westminster Effects about it, and he was a bit surprised, but did not mind me talking about this in this video. Very elegant of him. He said, and I quote, he would get that fixed for sure. But anyway, I thought it would be important to share this information with you. Back to the original questions. Do we need a preamp pedal and should it have a DI out? To finally answer these questions, if they were not already answered, I will start by saying that there are basically two types of preamps. Those that try to keep the signal sounding as close as possible to the signal you send from your bass or from your effects, while still allowing you to add some EQ or even saturation. And those that add a particular color from brands like Ampeg or Fender, just to name these two. The other way to illustrate these two types of preamps is comparing them to a coat of varnish on top of a piece of wood. Some people prefer a more transparent or natural finish to see the wood, and others a more flashy one that covers the wood completely but looks attractive by itself. It's just a question of tastes and style, I suppose. The Wittenberg clearly falls into the transparent group of preamps. It's great at fine-tuning your sound without going over the top, without being too exaggerated if you prefer. It also adds a special je ne sais quoi. It opens up the sound, but without coloring it like other preamps would. About the DI, is it absolutely necessary and isn't a line out enough on a preamp? Well, if you're only going to plug it into an amp, then yes, the line out is more than enough. But in most other situations, the standard and most common or practical way to send your signal on stage or in studio is through a DI output. So unless you already have a good DI box or consider the DI output of your amp good enough for you. A preamp without a DI is perfectly fine. However, having an extra output is always a useful bonus for any preamp pedal. Oh, and finally, a small detail I really like about the Wittenberg is its size, similar to an MXR M81, for example, or a JHS Pulp and Peel that also has a DI out. Right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the Wittenberg bass preamp. If you also use a preamp in your signal chain, if it has a DI, just let me know what you think in general about preamps and how you use them. Thanks, bye. <laughs>
Thank you.